Charlie says, always tell your mummy before you watch one of Grimm's videos because he swears a lot. Hello everybody, I am Evelyn Carnitz, also known as Serena Michaelis, and recently Graham said something very interesting to me that I'd like to add on to. So without further ado, take it away, Graham. And it's not even hyperbolic, is it? but it sounds it. I know comparisons with yeah, Nazi Germany and so on are, are trite and usually end the discussion right there. But if you look at the propaganda aimed at the Jews, in the run-up to World War II and, and since, in white supremacist movements and so on. It's weird, it's unusual. You know, Anti-black propaganda tends to show them as subhuman or animalistic or in that, uh, that kind of way. But the anti-Semitic material, um, even if you look at the things like the mural uh, that was brought up so much in the recent election campaign about Labour, Conspiracy theories and propaganda about the Jews cast them in the light of this kind of hyper-competent conspiracy in control of the world. It, you know, it, it casts them not as subhuman, but as superhuman oppressors, conspirators, behind all manner of plans and so on. And feminism, at least radical feminism, when it speaks of patriarchy, casts men in this role of this oppressive conspiracy of, of geniuses, which just doesn't seem to marry up to reality at all as far as i can see but, but so, yeah. so the problem with nazi propaganda is that it leads to cognitive dissonance such as this so this is an excerpt from mistakes were made but not by me i'm not going to read the exchange between mr x and mr y i'm just going to read the bottom part all parts nailed mr x's thoughts process perfectly mr x doesn't even try to respond to mr y's evidence he just slides along to another reason for his dislike of jews once people have a prejudice just as once they have a political ideology they do not easily drop it even if the evidence indisputably contradicts a court justification for it rather they come up with another justification to preserve their belief or rationalize a course of action and for those of you who are deeply interested in the book like i said it's mistakes were made but not by me and i was reading from pages 79 to 80. Graham made another claim that said thoughts was very interesting, which is... Lean right. This isn't a place where you would normally expect to find a civil rights movement, which is what a, a men's rights movement or a, or a men's issues concern is. Th these are civil rights. These are things that can really only be tackled by governmental health care, changes to the law and so on, you, know, you, you have to go to the state for this. And if you're arguing for equality, your natural home should be on the left, right? I agree with my friend Graham, but for an entirely different reason. That being that from my online experiences with the right wing and the centrist, they have seemed to have fallen into demagoguery which I believe would be best explained by Gregory Guevara. So take it away, Greg. Truth is not just one source of information lying to you. Post-truth is not just fake news. Post-truth is the contradiction between hearing what you want to hear, knowing it's false, and then deciding this is true because who knows what's true and this one feels right. The solution to post-truth isn't really truth. It's not even fact-checking or second-guessing your sources. Cross-referencing every fact you get with four different sources is a byproduct of post-truth. 
not a cure to it. Responses to post-truth. Postmodernism and post-truth as a whole has had plenty of critics over the years, and we can think of one example as a radical movement against postmodernism as the intellectual dark web. People like Jordan Peterson, Sam Harris, and even Ben Shapiro can be seen as these people who have looked at postmodernism and post-truth, seen what it's done to society, and been like, and and they've been like, okay, uh, this has done enough damage. Uh, I think that there is objective truth, I think that there are these hierarchies that need to be preserved, and these are what the hierarchies are. They are essentially fighting back against the ideas of moral relativism and nihilism. Ben Shapiro's catchphrase, facts don't care about your feelings, is just like an interesting way of capturing the entire movement in like a sentence. So what can we do about this? Who says anything needs to be done? Conclusion. We live in an age of decentralized information. There are a million different sources that say a million different things, and it can feel difficult to hold a belief or a fact or a truth in your head and not have it questioned by a million other sources all at once. This is something I care deeply about. I don't want society to get infested with nihilism and post-truth. I don't want people getting caught up in unhelpful echo chambers of their own beliefs. I watch so many YouTubers that don't do adequate research before they release information in videos like this. I mean, for example, what if I told you that I hadn't done any research for this video at all? That I'm just kind of telling you what post-truth should be based off of how I feel post-truth should be, like, definition-wise, that my degree is unrelated to everything I just said, and that Giorgio Yakatura is obviously fucking fake? Well, that would be pretty inconvenient, wouldn't it? Because what I said kind of felt true, didn't it? And, and it was, don't get me wrong, but what if it wasn't? Well, it would probably shake your faith in video essays in general as a means of communicating information, given how easy it would be for me to lie to you. And then, if you actually cared about the information I just put inside your brain, you would have to, like, go online and fact check everything I just said. You'd have to figure out what I got right, what I got wrong, and then maybe you'd even have to dismiss me entirely if I got too many things wrong, because I'm just consistently filling your head with falsehoods. But do you have time for that? Do you have time to research every single video you watch? Do you have the energy to second guess every sentence you read? Everything a YouTuber claims? You have a job to work. You might even have people you support. Can you really be so paranoid all the time that you're critical of every piece of information that enters your brain, even when that information is coming from someone you like? Someone you've developed a parasocial relationship with? You binged my backlog. That means you know me, and you do. And Giorgio is real. And you know what else he said? Quote, 2017, he said, I love you, viewer. I really do. I'm glad you're here, and I hope you keep listening to me. Because what you believe is correct. It's right. And you should feel comfortable with that belief. My name's Giorgio. <laughs> Now, if you'll excuse me, I actually have to go write my PhD thesis in post-truth because I'm an expert. I don't like confusion. I don't like post-truth. I don't like chaos. I don't like ambiguity. I don't actively benefit from it. No! I want to go back to having discourse, you know? Because that's what I care about. That's what I give a fuck about. Fucking discourse! After all, free speech is the mechanism by which we sort out our society, right? You know what we need more of? Fucking talking! I think we should all get our facts from the same place, like pigs eating out of the same trough. That'll solve our problems. That'll solve our problems. That'll solve all our problems. I'm glad you find me a reputable source of information. I'm glad you believe the things that I say. And you know what? <laughs> I promise you, I won't abuse that trust. Great video, Greg. That that's really funny. Um. Anyway, that was Gregory Guevara. Anyway, um, he he brings up a lot of good points. Be sure to watch the whole entire video. And you know, this is a problem. I mean, I believe that all communities and all groups have this problem, but I'm seeing it more from the um, the right wing and the centrist, and not so much with the left, particularly the um, Zoom back left or the dirt back left. Because when I answer at with the dirt back left or the um, Zoom back left, they are more likely to engage with me. They are more likely to tell me how and why that I'm wrong. They are will more likely to give me, you know, articles and studies. But when I disagree with somebody from the right wing or somebody from the center or whatnot, they are more likely to send me a Sargon Vakad video. And it's a lot like 
you're using a YouTube video as a citation and it makes the progressives or the zoom back loud seem more academic like if if you know somebody sends you a study to back up their claim they're going to seem more academic than somebody who sends you a youtube video when you send somebody who disagrees with you a sargon of a cod video or a temple video you have no idea how naive it makes you look it makes it look like he placed too much trust on a YouTuber. And Sargon does get things wrong, as explained by Gushin. Social Equalizer does a good job calling out Sam Poole, where the articles he's re reading is not saying the things that he's claim is saying. Sometimes the articles Sam Poole is reading is saying the direct opposites that he's claiming that it's saying. I would see right-wingers and centrists go for emotional rhetoric, while I would see the left-wing more inclined to get both sides of the story, to listen to everybody, not just listen to one side and that being the be-all and end-all. So at the moment, I believe that free speech and men's rights issues would be better if it was adopted by the left because I haven't really seen any progress from either the centrist or the right wing. This has been Renemy Kylis or Evil Incarnate. Thank you for watching. Bye bye. It's time for you boys to share my last taste of the true black meat, the flesh of the giant aquatic Brazilian centipede.